back everyone we are back this summer to bring to you the fifth installation of the HYP also known as how you got place season 4 i arushi agrawal will be your host for this episode we have with us today mariala sai kalyan sir who has proven his mettle time and again with his multiple achievements hard work and honed skills with this we'd like to welcome him today to share his journey and experiences with us without further ado let's hear more from him firstly sir i'd like you to introduce yourself so that our audience gets to know better about you leon i'm from hyderabad so i'm doing my masters of technology in the great post graduate from iit college and i'm in my final year i passed out recently and last year i've done my software engineering internship at google and it got converted into a pto sir so, you have backed the software engineering internship at google and later that internship got converted into a full time offer so please tell us about how you came across this coveted opportunity your interview experiences and the key behind how you converted your internship to a full time offer so yeah back in august 2020 i think around that time the internship opportunities were opening for all the companies and so i found this opportunity for software engineering internship at google and one of my junior was referring me to a senior who has a friend in google so i got to fill through that senior he checked all my profiles my coding profiles all my resumes and all and he he helped me build my resume so that it is aligned with google policies and those guidelines that he saw my profile he saw it was uh, it was good enough for giving a referral and i got the referral the two weeks uh, around took time for two weeks and then i applied for the internship and coming to the process of uh, the application it was like uh, the first round was an online uh, test where they have it on 90 minutes or 100 minutes for four, four questions and it was like medium hard uh, level lead code level and so in code forces we can compare it to around the cd level so it was like uh, doable i thought the google will be little hard on this side because it's like obviously it's google i thought like it will be hard question but it was okay it was doable and uh, one month after that uh, we were told that i was shortlisted for the interviews and they told me to decide upon the date uh, so i gave for two weeks or later date for my preparation so it was okay so one thing with google is that uh, they are flexible with the dates but uh, they also suggest that the sooner you the sooner you do the better it is because like it's a first come first serve if the opportunity is lost then uh, you're gone so yeah i was uh, doing my preparation for lead code and i was uh, in contact with that senior and the, the uh, google employee who referred me so he helped me guide a little bit about the interview process and what could be the possible scenario questions he could ask and how how should we like code on a non auto complete id and it, it will be something like a notepad not like a auto complete id so we need to practice our code on google docs so i did that for two weeks around and in two weeks i did around 150 deep code easy medium questions and some of the hard questions too so that was my preparation for interview and followed by in october 2020 so it was like two back to back interviews with uh, so i got scheduled at night so usually at night we get uh, interviews uh, who are foreigners so i thought uh, i would be a little bit drifting in the accent because they are americans i mean i don't know if i could understand it properly but yeah i went fine and those two interviews uh, it was like first interview was like uh, one long question and followed by a follow up question to optimize those codes it was mostly related to ad hoc and graph theory and like observation questions so mainly the gauge of communication skills and dsa along with implementation and code and second interview was similarly they asked two there's two questions they are different questions but they were around medium hard level and it went fine but uh, the results weren't that pretty good and i was i was asked for the third interview so i got to know this one month after i gave my first two interviews right so you see like uh, i started in august the applications and i'm going till october september now I'm like yeah so it was a lengthy process again i gave my third interview so this was an indian uh, interview i gave it in the morning and it was asked about uh, like stall algorithm and an extension of that so it went pretty well and again my candidacy was forwarded to hiring committee it uh, got passed in hiring committee but again there was a problem there like the headcount is very less at google at that time and i couldn't be hired because of that at that time so i was put on a hold for like 3 months ago so for 3 months i was like with no results no at the hiring i didn't know even if i passed the interview or not so i thought uh, okay this is like uh, 
gone up a shanty. I should be moving on to next companies. But again, in January, I got a call that uh, we can continue the candidation. I got the uh, internship opportunity finally. And like uh, coming to the internship experience, so it is like a lot of things you learn in the internship. So the first two weeks were like very drifty. Uh, you get so much information at once. Uh, you get a lot of things to process. You got to meet a lot of people. You got to set up your work from home setup since it was in COVID, right? So you have to do all those stuff in lockdown. It was a little bit stressful, but it was okay. But uh, coming to the internship experience, like uh, you need to uh, get ownership about your project. You need to know many things about your project. Do daily sync ups uh, or like uh, weekly sync ups with your managers or like immediate host or co host. So you get to clear your doubts uh, with many people. Uh, you can reach out to anyone in Google. It's not like uh, they won't hesitate to answer any of your questions. And no question is a silly question for them. So it's okay to ask questions and get cleared. And you, get, you can clear your roadblocks for that. And one key important thing I would like to suggest is that uh, whatever the work you do, it's important that we document our daily progress on what. Because like we don't know, we do many stuff today. And we don't know what uh, we have done. Exactly, tomorrow. like uh, we forget all the things we did yesterday. But if we document that, it will be helpful in your midpoint evaluation or in end evaluation. Because how much ever work you do, what matters is that what you're showing to them. So if you're not showing good quotes or good uh, work to them, progress, then it is like uh, vain, right? So documentation is an important part. And even in the learning, uh, you need to go through documentation. Like there are no like courses or YouTube videos, something like that. But most of it is through documentation, through reading only. And though there are some internal courses available at Google, but uh, team specific courses will not be there generally. So that you have to go through the, the de design documents, they give the proposal documents, they give. And uh, you can get cleared, uh, but you know, to get panicked to all this uh, information you're getting, you can clear your, your, your doubts every time with your managers or some, some teammates with them. So that was about my internship experience. But, uh, and, one thing about internship experience is like uh, you have a lot of fun, right? So you don't uh, work on weekends and you don't work on holidays, but uh, we have a lot of fun. Like uh, there are many team meetings and on Fridays and like they have many fun activities here. And even if we have virtual offsite uh, twice held, and we have many workshops for personal development and like resume development. So don't miss out on those fun opportunities, but uh, also do the work assigned to you. Don't just neglect that. And take it. Take those three months or four months seriously, so that you could maybe land in a PPO. Yeah. So you have displayed an extremely strong background in competitive programming over the years, with commendable ranks in prestigious coding competitions like Google Kickstart, ACM ICPC, and CodeShift Snackdown. How would you describe your learning trajectory and strategy in this field? So. This word competitive programming from my ASF seniors, they held a session for what is coding and what is like PSA, corporate programming, those stuff. And I started getting into this uh, sites like Hacker Rank, Hacker Ed, those. Or I was practicing, I was giving contests, even ASF held some contests. I did practice in those, and me along with my friends, we were competing. So we are seeing our uh, names on leaderboard. We are also seeing that uh, seniors were also in that, and they were like top 10 or top 20, and we were like in the bottom parts. So that was the start of computer programming, and later we got introduced to code chef for challenges like long challenges, short challenges. So that's where it began the whole CP journey, like long challenges. There's a lot of stuff to learn in long challenges. Like we get ten days for ten questions, and it's not necessary that you solve all the questions, but uh, you get to learn a lot because each question is like uh, very time taking, and you need to brainstorm a lot. Uh, there are a lot of concepts behind a single question, right? So. So even if you don't solve, uh, after you uh, the con contest is ended and you go back to the tutorials, you see that there are many concepts being used. So in that way, you learn all the different concepts present, like uh, DP, binary search, uh, 3D, uh, graph, graph algorithms, or even advanced algorithms like uh, sequential, some of those sort of things. Like. So major concepts I learned through long contests only. And short contests are like uh, for increasing your rating because it's like three hours contest, right? So you generally do that uh, with all your practice and all. But, uh, and later, I took a little break from computer programming in my first year somehow. I went a little on ethical hacking side, but uh, that was like uh, I, uh, I I got nothing out of it. It was like uh, I wasted my time for that instead. I should have been focusing on my computer programming. 
I loved computer programming. Like uh, I didn't do anything in my first three years except that. So again, I shifted to code forces, and there was like a plethora of things you can learn. Like there are many blogs written, many great coders. Like you can see the codes, you can see the editorials, those all things. And like uh, the contests are held very regularly. Like it will be like a weekly three contests, or four contests, you know, and the editorials are also like uh, within two days you get those. And there are many communities forming. And I joined many of coding groups and coding discussion groups in Telegram and like. Uh, LinkedIn and all like you get help from them. You get to discuss uh, what's wrong, what went wrong with this question. Uh, you can like learn that way. So that I did for, for the first three years, and in my, in my third year, I aim for this uh, ACM ICBC. So that was a little more uh, hard practice we have to do. So we made a team. We practiced together for like many competitions. Like every all the every other day, we used to give each other mashups and contests. And, we used to like uh, create bots on Discords to give a random problems to us, so so random unsolved problems, so we could just solve it daily. And yeah, that way we learned for ICM, ICPC, and we got through two regions, the Kanpur Gwalior and uh, yeah, yeah, the Gwalior Pune and the Kanpur regions. And, but uh, we couldn't perform well in my regionals because we didn't uh, prepare that much for the regionals. It was like very new, so we thought uh, maybe we should, next year we should do and again. I started after com com like completing my uh, regionals. I can uh, paste up on, on my uh, computer programming. Like uh, I gave mashups daily. Yeah, I saw a lot of problems in practice more, and I saw I saw a lot of contests also. So that made me learn a lot, and it boosted up my rating. Yeah, that's great. Also, since we all know that competitive programming requires a lot of patience and hard work, can you tell us about how you handled any roadblocks or failures that came in your path and the changes in your outlook and efforts based on these criteria? There are roadblocks. Uh, so in my first year, I used to not know what a graph algorithm is. So uh, what I did was like, I, I searched from YouTube tutorials and like I seeked out my friends who knows that and also like, there's some of the, there is one book called CLRS, you can read that. So concept wise, I was uh, on a little bit weaker side for the first year. I don't know many of the concepts and, and still I was doing all the problems, which I, which was out of my level. So what I did was uh, first learn all the concepts, then maybe practice on it. And then you can uh, get cleared of all, uh, all the questions if you can able to do or not. And after that, uh, learning all the concepts in my first, uh, first year up to third semester, I guess, and then, uh, there were a few questions which are out of your level, definitely. Like you cannot solve them on your own. So that will be a blocker for us. Like uh, we'd be stuck on that and our ratings would be stable. It won't be increasing. So for that, uh, what I did was uh, I upsolved the problem after the contest, like uh, on my own or I took some time. And if I, if I don't get that, I lost the hands and the editorials. And also if the editorials are like sometimes weak, uh, we don't get the entire thought process through it. So you go through the comments in the blog, right? So they say that I did this this way. Why not? It could be correct. And so you just analyze all those uh, editorials and other the solutions your friends has written or some of the top words you follow, they have written and you get to know their thought process. So that's how you get uh, that, uh, okay, I can solve this question this way. It's fine. Uh, next time we'll try this. And so that way you can uh, try solving questions one level above you. So that's how you increase your ratings or like you can clear your roadblocks that way. So absolving is the key I feel for computer programming. How would you capture your five year journey starting as a fresher and ending up successfully placed at your respective company with growth in your skills and career trajectory? Yeah, uh, I was like uh, very numb. I don't know anything. Uh, it was all like fresh and I've traveled like 2000 kilometers from my home to go to this college and I literally don't know anyone or how this system works and all. So I was a little nervous for the first few months and all. And again, like, uh, but uh, in my first uh, vacation we get during Diwali, also I was like pretty confident that I had learned a lot of things, like uh, not about academics, but related to other stuff, like uh, how to manage hostel, how to make friends and all, you know, how to meet with new people. And, like uh, how to like, uh, you can learn different skills, right? Uh, you know how to organize a fest, you know how to design a poster, uh, and you know how to set up your land basically. It's a hard process. Yeah, yeah and those all uh, in networking, uh, 
yeah, those all skills actually helped me boost my confidence that, okay, I could do something here. And yeah, that uh, in my first year, first vacation was a little different. I was first time back to my home and again, I was back to my college. So it felt a diff little different again, but uh, yeah, I got used to it again. Yeah, and uh, uh, whatever you do in the five years, uh, you just remember your first year a lot because you explore a lot of things in your first year. And it's like uh, most immense free time is in like first year only. You, you're not under any pressure of academics or like a job or internship, nothing. You're just free. Yeah. So that you can experience in your first year. And coming to second year, it was all like, uh, it was all stable learning thing. Like you, you have all the friends set up, you have all the coding environment set up, you have all the academic set up. So it's just that you have to work on each of, each of them to get your experience and all. So there were a lot of fests held. I did participate in a lot of fests. I did. I was part of the fest team and graphic design or the organizing events. So it was fun a lot uh, in my first years. And and moving on to that, and I did uh, computer programming till my third year, as I said. And only it was in my uh, sixth semester, I guess, where I actually dived into web development and I learned a stack and I built projects from that of that uh, semester. So. That was my like, uh, half journey, and the two years is pandemic. I mostly did nothing, I just worked through my academics, and I was like applying for internships and all. I just, yeah, and working on my resume, how to build uh, these projects and improve my computer programming ratings and all. But yeah, comparing to my first year, I feel a lot matured now. I feel a lot. Uh, uh, skills have been growing on me, and yeah, I feel I'm pretty confident going into the industry now. What are some noticeable changes that you have observed in the college culture and the community in these five years and the changes that you are hopeful of being brought in the next few years? The changes in college. Some things obviously don't change in college. So, yeah, so some things are like, uh, I see a lot of people coming up. I see the strength is growing. And even the culture, like uh, the fest, if you see the, look at the size of fest, it's growing every year. And if you see like the, things uh, juniors are doing like uh, they have been participating in hackathons and internships right from the second year or like, first year only so it is like they're doing things very fast and i feel that's what growing uh, that's what keeps this community alive though that you need this good peer culture growing around you so that you can learn from them you can grow from them right so in my first year if you see if you look at the packages uh, when i joined this college the highest package was around 33 lakhs per annum and it was somewhere in japan but now if we fast forward to five years, we can see like we got through a place package. Many, many of people have grabbed this opportunity. Right? So that was one thing growing on. Like, and even like in my first year, uh, whatever the things we do in first year, like development or uh, data programming, it was based on our fifth year seniors. Suppose one of the fifth year seniors got through a good company through computer programming, everyone used to do computer programming. And if we, if we see like they do good at Android, everyone used to do Android. But now it's not like that. I feel. I feel that uh, we got many opportunities in multiple domains, and everyone is doing whatever stuff they like. Not depending on the placements of the fifth years, right? So uh, yeah, they're even having opportunities in internships at uh, the, the very first second year, and they get they're getting PPPOs like at, even at the third year they're getting the PPPOs. Yeah, that's how it's growing, and I feel uh, it should be continuing. And I hope one day we go to the ICM ICPC finals. Our college name should be there in there. We appreciate you taking time to share your ideas and visions and taking the time to express them. We wish many more accolades to your name in the future. And with that, another episode comes to an end. We hope that the audience will gain more understanding from our guests' experiences and viewpoints. We'll be back with a new episode soon with some fresh interview experiences, insights and placement deals to share. Till then, Thank you everyone and keep watching.